Hi, welcome back. <laughs> we are back again to talk specifically about preparing for MD PhD interviews. And Andy has returned, but um, Andy, if you could introduce yourself again. Yeah, so my name is Andy. I'm a second year MD PhD student. Um, currently, I'm in my PhD phase just doing research in leukemia. I grew up in Vancouver and uh, did my undergrad at Simon Fraser University. And I have Bahar right here. Hi. You introduce yourself. Please. Absolutely. Yes, I'm Bahar. I'm a second year MD PhD student as well. Currently in the second year of my MD. I will be starting my PhD this summer in clinical epidemiology. Um, and I did my undergrad at U of T in biochemistry and did a master's at Mac in global health. Thank you very much. So I want to start this, and I'm sorry I didn't say, I'm Kendra and I'm the Associate Registrar for Enrollment Management. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in and you don't know what this is, just so you know, if you applied to the MD-PhD program, you would know it's just a little checkbox on your MD application and you submit additional application material and you would be reviewed for that. The MD-PhD interviews, invitations, the majority have gone out. It doesn't mean that you won't get an invitation. Um, because there often is a waiting list. So if there is a cancellation, you may get an invitation and it could happen as, as close as two days before the interviews. But um, unlike the MD interviews, the majority of the MD PhD interview invitations have gone out. Um, and then just briefly, what is the program in case you don't know, it's uh, the MD PhD program is training future clinician scientists. And typically students start in first year and either after they're finished their second year or after they're finished their first year, they leave the program to complete a PhD. And then once their PhD is, everything is done except maybe the final draft, they can return to the MD program. Um, typically they'll defend their PhD in the summer after their second year if they're returning or if they're returning to clerkship, probably they'll have it all wrapped up and uh, finish the MD program. And then you graduate with your MD and your PhD. Um, because of the length of the program and sort of the financial burden that's involved in going to school for so long, uh, there is funding for this program. About eight students are admitted a year and they're admitted with the guaranteed annual funding package of tuition plus incidentals plus 18,000. That's the current level, so it could change um, from year to year. So that is the MD-PhD program. So, and, and sorry, one last thing. If you are coming to the MD PhD interviews, please watch the prior video about the MD interviews. We're going to talk about it all, but this is going to focus a little bit more on the MD PhD interview day and then just managing the two different days. So, um, did you guys talk about your focuses for your PhD yet? I'm just, you, you, you said where you are in the program. I think it'd be interesting for them to know where you're thinking about doing your PhDs. Um, so I did my undergrad in molecular biology and I came out of my bachelor's degree um, and so there I did a mixture of wet lab and computational work. Um, so for my PhD I'm looking at leukemia um, and we're looking at leukemic stem cells but I'm doing uh, I guess mostly computational stuff right now with some experiments going forward. Um, and uh, yeah, so I haven't started my PhD yet, but my background is mostly in the basic sciences. However, I will be doing a career switch with my PhD and going into statistics. Um, so I'm interested in innovative clinical trial design, um, and that's where I'm hoping to go. So kind of ironing out the details for my projects right now as we gear up for the summer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. So the MD-PhD interviews this year are staggered. There is one on a weekend with no MD interviews. So that's the one, if you're wondering like how they picked which students to go to what day, it's actually very practical. Local students get invited to the split interview days um, and then students who are following, sorry, are, are traveling from somewhere further away, we try and schedule them for the weekend that has the interview dates on on one weekend just to try and reduce the financial burden for those students um, and so this year there's a interview coming up that is just a singular MD PhD interview that weekend and then those students will have their MD interview on a different weekend and then there'll also be one weekend where students are attending their MD PhD interview and their MD interview on the same weekend so um, Luckily, Bahar and Andy had different experiences. They did it differently. 
So Bahar, could you sort of tell me which of those you did and sort of what was your experience on your MD, PhD interview day? Like what was it like when you arrived and that sort of thing? Oh, for sure. Um, so I had the experience wherein there was a two week break between my two interviews, um, which I appreciated. I thought it was a good way to kind of recoup, get back into doing things, really reflect on the answers I had given in my MD, PhD interview and reset for the MD interviews. That worked for me. Um, and I guess the moment I walked into the MD-PhD interview, it was very nice because there were a lot of, uh, they kind of corral you into a room with some of the older students and the current students, um, and then you're meeting some of the other candidates that you're side. And it gives you some downtime to kind of get to know some of your potential peers and colleagues, if not at this school, then at least at other schools across the country, depending on where they end up. Um, and it kind of gets you into the swing of things, gets you ready to answer questions in a more comfortable way. It's a really nice way to ease ease into it, so I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. So I, I obviously showed up nervous, um, but I mean, I think that's pretty natural for anyone, really. Yeah. Um, and that period really just gives you time to kind of decompress, reset, be mindful, and then be prepared to go in. And um, on that day, I, you know, I've coordinated that day before, and the MD, PhD, current MD, PhD students are tripping over themselves mm -hmm. to volunteer on that day. And they are completely, you know, I think people might be concerned that there's like some secret test in place. They're completely separate from the admissions committee and the admissions system. They're just there because they were there when, once before, and they really want to help you feel comfortable that day. So just take advantage of it. I've walked into the room and people are sharing their favorite jokes. Like it, it, the conversation could be anything. You're not there to impress the volunteers. They're there to help you feel comfortable. So feel free to like steer the conversation whatever way would make you feel comfortable. And so Andy, you, you were different. You traveled all the way from BC. So you had everything on one weekend. So what was, what was that like for you? Mm -hmm. um, um, so I will be relatively brief, um, but I came in, I read a flight on, on Friday, I believe, and my interviews were Saturday and Sunday. Um, so I had a day to rest, uh, and then I did the MD-PhD interview. Um, and it was really nice to, I guess, for me to get it all done in a weekend, uh, and also go back home so I have to pay for more flights. Um, but when I, when I walked in, uh, I was in the afternoon session, and so I walked straight into a lunch, um, and it was really good food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there were some really good speeches by uh, the program director and the current MD PhD class president, um, and it was I guess just a, such a friendly environment um, that I was stressed, but it, it calmed me down uh, just a little bit more. And there were current MD PhD students all around; they were very friendly. And you know, if you didn't want to talk, you didn't have to. But if you wanted to talk, then they're there to chat about anything. Um, so I did chat quite a bit with a few of these students, and it was just really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would say um, that the biggest difference between the MD PhD interview day and the MD day is that there's so much food at the MD PhD <laughs> interview day. <laughs> there's a lot of food there. Uh, so come hungry because there's going to be breakfast, there's going to be lunch, there's going to be leftovers. And in fact, bring Tupperware. That's what the volunteers <laughs> do. Um, and also, it, it's just less structured. There, you have the hour interview. Um, you know, it's the MPI, same same style of interview, but the time before and after is just basically hanging out with the with the volunteers. It's not like the MD day where you're sort of cycling through, and you know, luckily you know what time your interview starts, and so that's that's it. That's the hour commitment you have, and the rest of the time is up to you if you get there on time for lunch, or if you want to hang around after to get to know people. Um, yeah, that's how the day runs, and it's I think it's like friendly and relaxing, uh, well, as relaxing as it can be. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you guys prepare for the MD-PhD interview? It's an MPI, but it, it, did you do something different than preparing for the MD interviews? Mm, do you want to start this one or? I can, you I go can ahead. start. Okay, so I guess for me, uh, thinking back on this, um, I kind of did focus more on the research aspect of things to really get a sense of how I kind of predicted my career would lay itself out. Um, nothing super concrete because, I mean, you can't really know a lot about it. And once you go in, everyone expects that you will be learning more as you go and kind of building up your portfolio and deciding which path you want to take when it comes to your career as a clinician scientist. But still having a sense of the commitment that you're about to undertake because it is a 
fairly long program. It's about eight years, um, which is no small undertaking. And so it's very, very essential to kind of make sure that you're aware of all the advantages and disadvantages of doing it in this particular trajectory versus pursuing it in different ways um, and knowing what you're willing to kind of put on hold potentially um, and just other aspects of your life that you haven't necessarily mapped around it because I think that's a very important thing is to really be certain about the fact that you're interested in doing this because you know research is is wonderful and amazing but it's not easy all of the time mm -hmm. um, and so I found that in a lot of the questions that we were asked to that was a big focus was to make sure that we really genuinely thought about what we wanted to do and that we were actually committed to the clinician scientist path mm -hmm. um, so I, I made sure I went back on my CV looked at all of the you know conferences I'd gone to uh, presentations I may have done whether posters or oral presentations um, I kind of reflected on the projects I'd undertaken looked at some of the I guess skills I had developed through those different projects thinking about what I could bring to the table what I wanted to develop further what U of T had to offer specifically you know so looking at the different departments that are available maybe even specific investigators that you wanted to work with just really really being more focused on the scientist aspect and seeing how that would interplay into the clinician side of things that's great um, and I think the um, one thing I would like to highlight that from what you said is to look at your application materials we talked about this in the interview prior it's important that you take a look at what we know about you so far so you're not just sort of coming in from left field that that you're continuing that story that you laid out and I think that you know in the MD interview process a lot of or so not the interview process but the application process at the beginning we talk a lot about the attribute clusters for the MD PhD you know keep in mind that no one there in that interview and application process has reviewed any of your MD materials nor are they particularly interested in the attribute clusters they're looking for great future clinician scientists and I would say if there's any kind of outline for what that is it's in the um, MD PhD reference letter, there's a list of things that your referees are supposed to speak to. So those, that's what they're looking for. Um, and so just that's my hot tip for the day. That would, yeah. have, that would, have, that would have been really cool to know what I was applying. I know. <laughs> well, all of, your, all of your referees knew that. You probably sent them the, uh, the information. Uh, oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, so for, I guess, for my MD PhD interview, I, I had it just the day before my MD. So I had thought a lot about all of the experiences that I had. Um, but here I was obviously more focused on my research. Um, so the difference is that Bahar uh, came out of her master's, but I was coming straight out of fourth year undergrad. And so I didn't have as many research experiences that I could reflect on. So I did two projects throughout my undergrad. Um, and I just thought a lot about them and what they meant. And, um, I think I talked about both of them, and, and you know, one of them was actually negative results that were never published and went anywhere, but I uh, reflected a lot on, on what that process was to me and uh, you know, I guess how much I enjoyed that process and, and what it meant for uh, my research in the future. Uh, I also had to think a lot, obviously, about MD-PhD and you know, the long career path, but also balancing both hats, and uh, if you have the same amount of time in the day, but you are trying to do both of these things, um, you know, can be really difficult. So where do you find perhaps that, that synergy and, and where do you position yourself? Uh, a big difference uh, between schools. So I interviewed at UBC for MD PhD as well. Um, and I get the sense that uh, for my UBC interview, which I'll talk just a little bit about, um, they wanted a better idea of what I had as a PhD project. I, going forward mm -hmm. and so you know I had to find a supervisor that would be willing to just chat with me and potentially take me on if I got accepted and think about what my project is and you know go through all that research and, and have a plan going forward for my U of T one and this is more of an attitude at U of T uh, there's less of that onus to know exactly what you want to do uh, when you're applying and you have the first year and a half a year or two years to figure out you know, what it is you want to do and if you want to switch fields or not. Um, so I didn't worry as much, but I did look into uh, just a handful of people that were kind of interesting to me. Yeah. Well, and that, I think that sort of speaks to the tip from the MD interview um, session that we just did as well, which is to read broadly. Like even if you love, you know, a specific kind of research that you did, you know, you should, if you are a curious person, you should be reading about lots of different things that are going on. Um, yeah, and also I like the, that you brought up UBC because this is another interesting thing about MD PhD programs 
is that, you know, unlike medicine, I would say, you know, the programs, well, actually maybe that's generalization, but MD, PhD, they're very different. Mm -hmm. They're philosophically quite different. Like UBC has a plan to get you out in six years, where I think seven, that's seven, seven, seven years. Okay, yeah. sorry, then. But, you know, here we're like, well, eight years on average, but we know it could take longer. Um, there's just different... There's a different philosophical approach to that kind of research and, and what the expectations are. And so I think it's important to kind of, I mean, it's not necessary, but to have an understanding of what each of these programs are that you're applying to and what their strengths are. Um, okay, so I think you guys already touched on this, but you know, it's, it's kind of like a question. Two separate interview days at the same school, how did you mentally prepare for it? Um, because they're going to be very different days. One day they're looking, the MD day, they're, they don't even know, I don't know if it came as a surprise to you, but they don't even know that you are here for MD PhD interviews. Mm -hmm. It's not part of the materials they've reviewed. So um, how did you prepare for those two different days? Like mentally prepare that you had two different days? Mm -hmm. Part, do you want to take this? I can, yeah, for sure. Um, I think what I was very pleasantly surprised about was that I felt a lot more relaxed going into the MD interview just because I had had, a, like I had been able to experience the modified personal interview, the uh -huh. MPI, mm -hmm. already at U of T once before. And so it was kind of like, okay, I've been through this. So I have a sense of what I'm walking into. And so there was less uncertainty when it came to that aspect. And so I just, I felt a lot better. It was like, okay, I have two shots at this school, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so that actually gave me a lot more peace of mind and again, because I had the two weeks in between, it just gave me a lot of time to actually sit and reflect on what I had said and maybe what I wanted to um, potentially flesh out further when it came to the MD interviews. And really, I think you just kind of figure out a lot about yourself throughout the process and maybe even further hammer out what it is that you want based on even some of the questions that you get from the interviewers in your first interview. So I felt a lot more prepared and I was actually very grateful that I was able to have the two dates. So that was good for me. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think the second interview was definitely, I guess, less stressful uh, because I knew what I was walking into, right? I was familiar with the format. Um, so mine was one after the other. Um, I actually met a few uh, people who, who were you know, doing the MPI for the MD-PhD interview with me, um, and we also had nothing to do that night, so then we went out for food, uh, and we just kind of hung out and, and just chatted. So it was really... Uh, nice. <laughs> Actually, one of those people ended up being my roommate now, who's also uh, a classmate. But it was really nice, and it was just uh, kind of nice to find a little bit of a sense of community and then relax before my next one. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I didn't think too much about you know, how do I prepare for each of these. I you know, thought a lot about my experiences in you know, non-research. I thought a lot about my research experiences, and then just kind of ready for. Do you guys have any last words, any tips for people who are getting ready for these two big days? Mm -hmm. I mean, getting the interview, we've, we've mentioned this in the last uh, session, it, it's an amazing accomplishment. Like, you should feel reassured in that getting in the door to get your bum in the seat for an interview is fantastic. So you should be proud of that and congratulations and try and sort of calm yourself knowing that you've already been picked we're already interested uh, as a quick tip i i guess i um what, what worked for me was kind of going in uh with low expectations <laughs> I, <laughs> that I expected not to get in uh, and it was just kind of a nice opportunity to get free food uh, and chat, <laughs> and chat with people about research that i was interested in and then meet other other students who are interested in career path and you know, some of these people will end up being your classmates and some of them will end up being medical students or MBPH students at other schools and suddenly you know the next year you have all these connections mm -hmm. um, but I think I just think a lot about the research experience that you have and and what they mean to you and not just whether they're successful and whether you publish or not mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily need publications um, and I think it's Think a lot about the process, and because if you're going to do an eight-year degree, uh, it really is uh, about enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be passionate, and I think when they talk about authenticity for the MD program, I think that your passion is actually what really is what people are looking for in the MD PhD program because it's something that's got to pull you through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I would just echo pretty much everything that Andy said. Uh, one of the things looking back that I wish I had done um, was really just enjoy the process because you don't really get that experience typically again. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's nice to just kind of like take in every moment, be grateful for what you're having and make sure that you let your personality shine through. Because at the end of the day, that's what sticks and that's how people remember you and you want to be memorable. Um, so just don't be afraid to be yourself. Um, even if it means being a little bit more polished or refined than you normally are, but still be yourself. Make sure that that shines through because there are going to be so many stellar candidates. You're going to meet so many incredible people. Um, so what really, what it really comes down to is just whether you connect, um, whether your passion comes through, whether that's like palpable and something that people can identify with and your interviewers think will get you through um, something that's, you know, considered challenging, which would be this dual degree. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would say be yourself, bring that passion. Don't be afraid to be passionate in each of the stations and, and just enjoy every minute of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the interviewers are really great people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so good luck with your interview. Thank you very much. Um, this. We have one comment and I will answer in the comment box how you can get in touch with me and I can keep in touch with you and get, there's actually, I know Bahar is incredible, but there are quite a few students who are working in IHPME and uh, I guess as a final plug for the U of T MD PhD program is that we are across several faculties, including the Dalalana School of Public Health and Engineering, well basically any faculty that you want, you can do your PhD in, which I think is makes us unique compared to some other programs across uh, the country. Anyway, so good luck, and um, I will be seeing you on the uh, interview day, but these guys might be volunteering, so we'll see you later. Okay. Bye.